All right, welcome back. So today we're going to implement something called a try data structure, and we're going to do it to implement some kind of auto completion uh, ability that you might see on a search engine or something like that. So it'll be a naive implementation using the try data structure. Uh, you can see here on the right here with this graph, uh, you've got keys A, 2, T, TED, 10, I, N, and I, N, N. And that makes up a, uh, all the English words that are here, it'll be put into this uh, tree type structure. And so you can do different types of operations on it, like oh, find me all the words that have, that start with I or N, um, how many distinct words are there, uh, does a particular word exist in the structure. Um, so rather than kind of storing, if you think about it like a hash table, if we wanted to store all the words and then we're like, well, I want to find all the prefixes, find all the words that have these prefix, you might have to do a lot of computation like that, whereas the try will kind of uh, be able to give you that ability. Uh, there's also another type of data structure called a suffix try, which is basically just the inversion of this. So you would reverse the strings and then you would insert each of the nodes uh, from the end and then kind of traverse it that way. So you have a suffix ability. Um, there's also other things like a thing like a, a compressed, uh, compressed try, where if the branch only contains one child, um, you can actually compress it up so that it doesn't need to have all these sort of like um, sort of like one lots of one one branch childs essentially. So uh, that's also known as a radix tree, right? Compressed try, space optimized variant. So you can see here in this example of a radix try, a radix tree. So our O M forms a branch. So rather than have O and then M, same thing U L U S on here, that's a single branch. So it's just a way to kind of compress that um, here, but you do have to end up storing uh, multi-byte kind of characters at each node. So it's a little bit different. Uh, typically with a try data structure, you can kind of implement it where uh, you can see here in this example, here the children form an alphabet. So rather than actually storing the key, you have, let's say, an alphabet where, let's say you're dealing with the ASCII characters or A through Z, then you know that the children will be of size 26. And so the index in that uh, node uh, set of children determines which character it is. Um, you can expand on this to do what's called a bitwise tree, where depending on the bit that is actually set, uh, determines which sets of children uh, are being assigned. So that's kind of like here where in this try representation of the string sets C shell cell she, right? You can see that each index uh, determines which uh, item child is actually set. And you have other things like, is it terminal? Which means like, oh, have I reached the end of a node or word? Um, right, so that's kind of it. It's a pretty simple data structure. Uh, so I've gone ahead and implemented it. So we've got a struct of node. We're just going to do it very simply with a uh, vector of nodes. And we have a key which forms the character just as another uh, form of simplicity. Uh, the value is going to store the uh, at the leaf nodes. And then we're going to maintain a count in order to determine uh, the frequency of which those words actually showed up. Right. Uh, you notice here I'm actually using this tr uh, derive trait called default. So default's a nice little way to uh, get the uh, default values of of these items. So node with default will actually say children, a vector, an empty vector, a none on any options, and a zero for the count. Right. So I have a try data structure here. Got a root, and I've got a couple of functions here. Uh, insert exists and search. Uh, in the main here, what I've got is a, I'm implementing it, so I've created a new try, I'm inserting a couple of words, A, 2, T, apples, and test, and T. Notice I'm inserting the t, t twice. Uh, this exists should return true, true, airplane does not exist, so that returns false. I'm also going to print it out, and we're going to implement the format display. So we do that. And then we're going to search for these prefixes and, and get back the values. Uh, these should be sorted by the count, followed by the uh, alphabetic order. 
you know, we insert a few more and then do that. All right. So first thing you want to do is implement our insert function here. And we're just going to iterate over the characters. Uh, because we're not doing any sort of offsets between the characters to particular index that you might do in, let's say, a bitwise tree or a uh, different implementation, we're actually going to just do a little binary search. And we're going to pass a closure in to do that comparison on the key. That binary search is going to return an index if it's uh, currently in there. If it's not, then it'll return an error with the potential insert index. And on the vector, you can insert at a particular position. So in this case, insert an element at position index within the vector, shifting all the elements after it to the right. Uh, we don't have a key yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and say Okay, so we've got that. Should we need? All right, so now that we have that, we can actually, all right, so current. So once we reach the end here, we're going to want to make sure that we increment the count as well as replace whatever the value is with the value that's passed in. And remember, because it's an option, we can call that replace function on the option. So it replaces the internal value of the option. So even if it's none, it's an option. It has a function, so we can call replace. And we're just going to call a two string on that. Okay. Uh, because remember, this is an a and str, right? So we need to convert it to a owned string. Okay. All right. So that's it for the insert function. Uh, next thing is going to be the exists, right? So this one will be. We're going to do that same um, binary search. Passing in that closure. And then we're just going to modify the current so that it continue, continues to traverse down. If we reach an error, uh, then we can just go ahead and return false at this point. And then assuming that we reached the end, all we have to do is make sure that there is an actual count greater than zero, uh, which indicates that it is a terminal node. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. Next up is our search function. This is going to be able to give us something that, let's say, we want to find anything with a prefix. So all we have to do is kind of do the same thing we've been doing. Grab the root. If we reach an invalid node, then we can just go ahead and return at this point. All right. Now that we reach the end of the prefix, we need to start populating the results by essentially forming a queue of uh, performing essentially like a depth first search across all of our uh, nodes until we reach a leaf node. So we can need to form our results here in our queue. 
and we're going to push the current on there. So as we iterate over this, we need to grab all its children as well and push those to the queue. So we need to populate those. Assuming that the count is actually uh, more than one or more than zero, then we actually know that we are on a terminal node. So we can grab that value. Uh, I'm using as ref here because uh, later on we're actually going to want to be able to sort these. Um, and also it's worth noting that value is not a uh, does not implement copy the copy trait, so you do need to end up cloning it. And then we're just going to push these under the results as a tuple. That way we can sort by both the count and the value. All right. So now that we've exited that loop, we're going to call this sort by function. Um, we get a comparer. That's a you can pass in a comparator function. You can define total ordering for the elements. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in A and B as the closure, right? Because we want to reverse, we want to sort in descending order first. We're going to call B dot zero, which is our size rather than A, and then we're going to call compare, which will give us a total ordering, and then A dot zero. Okay. So anytime you want to do multiple comparisons, the uh, compare uh, compare struct actually has a, a then function as well. So we can just keep chaining these, right? Chaining two orderings. And we're going to say compare b.1. OK, so now that's sorted, uh, we're dealing with a tuple. So we're going to kind of convert those into. All right, remember I said before, this is a reference to a string. Okay, so we're going to have to say clone. And then we're just going to collect those. All right. Cool. So now we have that. Uh, the last thing we want to do is actually implement a display trait. Right, this is going to be able to format the output of our of our trait here. So let's go ahead and say for try. All right, so up here, no, that's fine. Hmm. Display, oh, right. There we go. So now that's imported, it need to be from standard format display. And then you'll see here it has this function formatting. Okay, great. So similar to what we did with the search function, we need to be able to populate this into a queue and iterate over everything. If you watch my level traversal uh, video and a tree, this is all that is going to be a level, another level traversal. And we're just going to implement it as an iterative traversal. Import DQ, standard collections. Assuming that there is anything. Remember, in a level, we need to iterate over everything up to into the queue for the level uh, because we're going to be writing things out as we iterate over that level. Iterate over its children and go ahead and say, we're going to use this write format. Right function takes an output stream and arguments, so we're going to want to do that. And this is just going to give us our key, right? Cool. Uh, because this is a result, we do need to handle that if it's an error. All right. Assuming that there is children on this node, we're going to want to push those. So we push that node onto here. Uh, this needs to be an okay. 
All right. All right, once we've exited this, assuming that there is anything left in the queue, I want to just write a line after that. Okay. All right, so that'll give us our... Um, that'll give us our format. Okay, so now we can kind of do that. And then lastly, okay, so we've done that, we've done that. Let's go ahead and run this. Cool. So we've just printed out those levels. You can see AAT, NPE will be the second level, third level is a, uh, PAS, fourth is LT, then E and then S, right? So we would expect A and N. Okay, so we go here. We can see we've inserted, we've done a couple of exists, printed it out, we've done our search operation. We notice that T is first here because we've inserted two of, the, two of them, insert T, insert T, test comes next. Uh, A, remember A, N, and apples, those are all of count one, but they are in alphabetical order. We're inserting test multiple times here, so we expect test to come first. All right, so that's it. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like it if you can, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again.